So I'm here at Royalty Exotics, which is owned by my good friend Houston Crosta, who you may have seen earlier when we did the Houston's Hot Chicken video, talking about all the franchises he's opening across the country. Well, this business was actually the one that really sparked his entrepreneurial career. It's right here in Vegas. They rent luxury cars to people all over the world, and they've got a lot of cool things behind the scenes that I wanna know about, especially how profitable it is to own a luxury car business like this. So if you're interested in Turo or you're interested in doing luxury car rentals like this, you're gonna wanna watch the rest of this video. Houston, Thanks what's up, bro? Brother. Thanks to see you again, man. You know, it's crazy, we always talk about the chicken business and that's yeah. the one I'm most excited about. But to have you here where I also, where I started, yep. right? It's it's pretty kind of humbling, you know? It's cool to see, because this is a very sexy business, yeah. right? This is the this is the one that that really I could never get rid of. You know, this is that one this that's This is your like, passion. This is that passion project. It's also my tax write-off, you yep. know? So it's, uh, it's got dual purpose, you know? It's kind of like real estate and cars have a lot of similarities as far as taxes go. So this is the one that, means the most to me, but it also benefits me somewhat the most as well. Yeah, no, 100%. So how long have you had this business for? So this this was started in 2015, right? I had worked as a, somewhat of a contractor with another rental car company, you know, where I had cars and I was kind of their uh, uh, inadvertent partner. Um, but this formatted, uh, this was formulated in September 2015. Wow. So I rented my first car here in probably late October, early November. And it was always luxury? Yeah, yeah, no, I started with a uh, Lamborghini. That was my first car, so. <laughs> so it's not like the Turo guys who start with their Toyota Corolla. No, I mean, before, so when I was that contractor, I started with a Nissan GTR. Yeah. And then I had some scooters, and the scooters was how I actually made the money to purchase my Lamborghini oh. to start royalty. Um, but, you know, that was before scooters were regulated with helmets and licenses mm. and insurance. So I was renting essentially bicycles with engines. Yeah. Right? So now, you know, it's a little bit different. You can't be in that business. Otherwise, I probably would have stayed in it because, like, that was the one. That was the real one that was going to make it forever, you know? Uh, less liability, that's the key. Yeah, I'm curious to hear as we go along about the liability and, you know, your YouTube channel is famous for showing all the wrecks that people make with these cars. Yeah. So. You know, I, I want to hear like how profitable this really is as we go along because uh, I'm just curious because I'm like, man, dude, this is a lot of overhead. Like, for instance, so th this car right here, man, like. These cars are my cars, right? This has never been rented. This is okay. never ever going to be rented. I mean, I'm actually like kind of nervous when people sit in it. You know, I, I love to let kids sit in it and stuff like yeah. that. You know, it's because like we're all kids at one time and we would love to have the experience to have any of these cars. So this side of my showroom, which would be, you know, the south side, is reserved kind of for the display cars. Yeah. Right? People come from all over the world to just view these cars. Yeah. And, you know, with YouTube and everything, we've got subscribers that come from many places. And I, I want them to be able to see something when they get here because... That they've never seen before. Yeah. Typically, like, we don't have very many cars here because the goal is to rent them every day. Right. Right. And, you know, now there's a, somewhat of a recession. As I think officially today there's a recession that was announced. But, so we're seeing a slowdown in Vegas with the car rentals. So there's more cars here during the middle of the week. The weekends are unaffected, which Vegas has always been a weekend city. Yeah. But, uh, so during the week, if someone comes in, you know, there may be a Huracan here or there, a Ferrari, but on the weekends, there's nothing here. Right. Just a, unless you come at eight in the morning when everybody's picking up, you don't get to see much. So I keep my personal cars here so people can see it. But yeah. to what, get to your point. What is this? Like, I've never seen, I don't even know what this is. So I, I, I agree with you that you've probably never seen this car because this is the only road legal Koenigsegg Agera in America. Um, there is a handful of other Agueras, which are called the RSs, that are designed to be more of a race car. Yeah. But this one here was basically the one designed to be a road car. It's called the Aguera S. And this one's actually named after its, found, or its, uh, its creator, which was David Hemmeyer Hansen. So it's HH for his last name. He was the founder of a company called 37 Signals of Base Camp. And he, uh, he moved out of the country and um, I, I was able to buy this car from him last year. And he owned it since 2012. How much did you pay for this? This car was like a little over three and a half billion, just a, just a hair, but uh, it it's kind of doesn't have a value, right? Like, yeah. it, it, this it's is one of those a kind. cars that I could immediately sell it for $5 million tomorrow morning, right? Like, this is a car that will immediately just go up because the person who finds this available to purchase, it's gonna be like one of those cars where I've always wanted that one car, yeah. I'll pay this, I'll pay this, I'll pay this. So if I ever do decide to sell this car, it could easily be double of what I paid. What, wh how do I even open it? 
Where's the, the little button under here? You hold it until you hear that sound, and then it, it kind of flips forward. Wow. And uh, that's called the dihedral door. That was the craziest door opening I've ever seen. It, it actually really is. If you get inside the car, you <laughs> close the door, and you watch it close, it's really sophisticated. I, you said that you know, you're, you're kind of antsy when people go in. I can go in? OK. Yeah, you have a blue watch on, so. OK, good. Yeah, this is my style of car, dude. I might be that guy who buys it from you. We could oh. trade for uh, uh, maybe that finished house on that big piece of land you got in that <laughs> Dude, this is nice. So how does this door close? How would you I? You have to physically pull it. Oh, I got to pull it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's light. Yeah, just let it, just let it shut. Whoa. Yeah. That was scary. <laughs> Dude. Looks like a spaceship. It's kind of like a cockpit in there, right? Like the windshield, that windshield costs more than most people's cars. How much is this windshield? That windshield's over $20,000. Holy crap. Yeah, I mean, but look at it. Like, it, it, to me, it actually looks like it's worth $20,000. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with airplane windshields, but airplane windshields could be over $100,000. Yeah. So how do I... So just hold the door open, like hold the handle and kind of forward, like forward movement there, yeah. That's impressive, dude. That is so cool. In the newer models, so this is um, what would be the Agera. In the newer model, it's uh, called the Rugera it's fully automated. So this car has a button where the doors will open, the engine compartment will open all from the key. Wow. Right, so here, the engine is, uh, is open here and um, it's, it's just, this is an extremely heavy piece to open. Holy crap. You've got that there. That's sick. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty beautiful, dude, you know? So this is in your collection. It's not rented out. Yeah. You'll never rent it out. But, but just so like I know, if you did have to rent it out, what do you think you could rent it for? So I would consider renting this car to be put on a display inside of a trade show, right? That, that would make sense for me, like for people to look at the beauty of it. I wouldn't want anybody sitting in it or driving it or any of those things. I mean, this is kind of like, what would your wife cost to rent, right? <laughs> like, that's how I look at this car, you, you know? It's I mean, not for sale. It's not for sale, it's not for rent, but like, if someone said, hey, I wanna put it in uh, the Bellagio for a weekend, we're gonna promote our company, you know, we have a really big brand that we're trying to launch, maybe it's an NFT brand or something, we're gonna get some excitement going. If I wanted to put that car there, I'd probably charge them around $20,000, $20, $25,000 a day. That'd be like the going rate, because, you know, we charge about three to $4,000 a day for regular Lamborghini. And if you just do simple math, I mean, based on 300,000 to three million. You know, three, four million, yeah. it's, you can just times it by 10, right? Now, does someone pay that? You know, actually, probably, right? I've never really offered it to anybody, but uh, I did consider now that the, the economy's changing to maybe consider like offering display rentals for people like those big shows and yeah. trade shows and stuff like that, because those companies, you know, they spend a lot of money in those booths. I mean, some convention people spend five, $10 million yeah. on, a, on a display there. Yeah. So. so you've got these other cars. I mean, I would love to go in all of them, but the video would take two hours, but you got, which one is this? This is the Pagani. Pagani. Uh, this is in the video that we last filmed. Um, this car here is also a car made in Italy. There's a hundred of these made. This car has really cool doors also. These are gold wing doors. So this is one of the only cars that's uh, in modern manufacturing that has gold wing doors. This is like so, the Batmobile. It's 2014, super crazy sick car. Love this car. And what's this car worth? About three million. Three million. Yeah. So okay. This one down here is a, a not what we call this standard. This is an Aventador S Roadster. So this car here is not as rare as any of the other ones. Okay. But this has a 1,200 horsepower twin turbo kit uh, strapped to the back of it. Wow. So this would be considered um, one of the fastest cars available today uh, to modify. Now, modifying a $600,000 Lamborghini isn't too common. Yeah. Um, there's probably 25 to 30 of these cars that were built over the past couple of years, but this is one of the few that have the top that comes off. So this car here is just absolutely mental. It makes the most wicked sounds. Um, it's not my favorite to drive because those cars are so much more unique. Right. And they're, they're so much more, they're just more special, they have more emotion to them. But if I didn't have those two, I would never, ever, ever sell this car. You yeah. Know? Like this is such a great car to have because it's like, it's so dynamic. You What's know. this car worth, you think? Uh, about 850, right? 850. I mean, the turbo kits on these cars cost $250,000 for the basic packages. Wow. Like, I mean, if you turbo your Mustang, just for instance, I mean, it's like 15,000, 
right? Yeah. Now you're talking about 250,000 for a car like this. And that goes into the engineering and there's a lot more to that than just hard pipes and turbo kits, you know? Yeah. So um, this is a mental experience though. Like this is, this makes some crazy sounds. That's nuts. All right, so obviously those are your personal collection. Those aren't for rent, but let's jump into the business now. So. On this side of the showroom, you've got actual cars that people can rent. Yep. So I'm curious, you know, what these cars will rent for, like what you expect to make on them. So you got a Ferrari. This one is beautiful, by the way. So this is a 2022 Ferrari F8 Spider. Okay. Um, it's got really great uh, options. I spec these cars new. Um, and, and so I, I kind of designed them to be rentals, right? Okay. So every car you see in the showroom, the ones outside, inside, these cars were all built by me from the factory. You know, I put my deposit down, I waited the, you know, the year and a half to build them. And a lot of rental car companies don't do that, right? So they're, they're not getting the cars kind of like tailored to this industry. That's kind of what makes me a little unique, a little special. I kind of think that uh, a lot of people, when they come see these, they don't expect these to be rentals, right? So this car here is uh, just under $400,000. It rents for about $2,800 out the door per day. And it's, uh, it's a little over 700 horsepower. It's convertible. It's one of the, this is the newest Ferrari that, that they make currently right now. So there's probably not very many other cars that give you the driving experience that, that this does. So tell me, this one rents for 2,800 a day. How many days a year do you think this will rent? Like what's the revenue this car will produce? Funny you say that, um, because when I first started this business, I had a, uh, a original, I had a red Lamborghini Huracan. Look just like this. Um, it was 2015. I bought that car brand new in 2015. I was one of the first people to rent a Huracan. And um, so my wife, my dad, everybody when they first started, they asked me, how many days a month do you think you can rent that car? And I said, if I told you 15, would you think I'm crazy? And they said, yeah. I said, if I told you 30, would you think I'm crazier? They said, no, you're, you're stupid. I rented that car 45 times a month, every month for as many times, still to this day, these cars rent I have 10, 12, 15 Huracans at a time. They all rent multiple times per day. So somebody rents it like for four hours or something? Correct, yeah, they do four hours, then someone will come in later in the day and do 24 hours, then they'll do another four hours. It's just like, also we do get a lot of bookings that are in the future, right? So those count on your rental days. So when you look at the end of the month, this red Huracan could be booked over 50 to 60 times in a month, you know, because it's obviously booked for the future. Holy right? crap. So these cars rent a lot. And that's kind of what makes Royalty unique is that, and the reason I'm able to have such special cars is because I do so much volume. An average year here at Royalty was 15 to 18,000 rentals a year. Wow. Right? With about a fleet of 15 to 25 cars. Depends because, you know, the seasons change, convertibles versus coupes. Like right now, you're not gonna go and drive Get a, a convertible in 115 degree weather, right? So the coupes are gonna rent more, yeah. right? Or they're gonna rent with the hard top convertible. Yeah, you know? I've, I've never been, so we got over here like the um, orange Lambo. I've never been a fan of the soft top. It just looks cheap. I do agree. That's why Ferrari, I mean, they just, that's why they go up in value so much. Like that, that car, car is beautiful. Yeah. That, that, if I were to pick any car I'd wanna buy, I'd wanna buy that one. That one I think is the most versatile car as well. It's got the most comfortable seats. It has the most leg room. Yeah. It's, it's got the most uh, tech in it yeah. as well. Like this car here is very loud, obnoxious. Yeah. These are the most reliable cars. I mean, that original red car I was talking about did 200,000 miles before <sighs> I sold it. And I shouldn't have sold it. I just sold it because, you know, the pandemic started and I was like, why do I need this car? You know, I'll get a brand new one now, yeah. you know? And I actually sold it for 50% less that I paid for it. After so, putting 200,000 miles on it. And $2 million in revenue. So, okay, let's talk about revenue. You know, you mentioned that you guys do, what was it, 15,000? 15, um, 15,000 rentals a year on average. A year. So, and yeah. what's the average rent rate, would you say? You're looking at probably close to, see, when I say out the door, um, there's about a 30 something percent tax rate in Nevada. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of things that, that come with that, you know, fees and stuff. So I'm seeing about, oh, if, if it's 2,800, I'm seeing about 50% of that money as like a gross revenue, you know, for, revenue you. for me. Okay. So the rest of that money goes to all these other things. The taxes, right? the insurance, yeah. the um, everything. And so when I see that, and then we take off the depreciation, we take off all the, the maintenance and stuff. Um, I'm seeing average monthly revenues between 500 and $600,000 here. Okay. And we have summer months that are really busy that go upwards of eight, 900,000. Um, the winter is very slow, goes down to 200,000. Okay, right? so it's very so, seasonal here. Yeah, you average it out, let's just say we call it $6 million. Right, right? okay. You know, uh, it's very seasonal in Las Vegas. And that's why 
right now um, it's you know it's different because it's 114 degrees it's not the best activity to do yeah in those months you so know? what would you say like the profit margin is on that six mil I think 10 to 12 percent 10 percent yeah now, you can make more money if there's no variable expenses but right now with the car market how inflated it is this car I was able to purchase these cars new because I have a relationship with the manufacturer um, for sticker, right? So this was a, let's say- Yeah, they're, they're all selling these for hundreds of thousands over sticker. Correct, so if I were to have to purchase any of these cars over sticker, I would be completely 100% negative Yeah. In, in the business. So, so do you finance all these cars? Um, I don't in the beginning. Um, I, I used to actually own everything outright. I was super conservative. I never wanted there to be a recession issue. And then I, I was able to get a, a bank to give me a line of credit. Okay. So I took all my titles and said, here, loan me some money on these and I'll expand, right? So I took some loans out on all the cars. So all the cars now are on my line of credit. So okay. it's not a traditional finance where I you know, fill out an application and give them my, my credit and all that stuff. And then I have a, a singular payment. So I basically have a line of credit that I draw off of whenever I, I, so, ple I so choose. So like this car here, um, I believe it cost me around $5,000 a month to operate at a $250,000 car. Right. Right. So um, I was able to get my money back and then in turn actually take a profit, right? Without debt and leverage in this industry, you're never gonna be able to get profit because you took like originally from when I built this company from 15 to 18, we did, I did, I made $5,000 a month. I mean, I, I drove a little Fiat 500 electric car. Like I was like, <laughs> why do I have all these crazy cool cars if I'm never making I don't even money? get to enjoy it. <laughs> exactly, and so, you know, every dollar we profited would go into saving to buy another car, uh. right? Or to replace a car in the fleet that was aged or needed some repair. So it's like, you when you think about this business, this is probably the worst business to invest in, in general, because the market's so variable. Right? Unlike a home, this car is depreciating at a usually two to three percent rate per month. Right. Right. And and that's very fast. If you're renting the car, it's probably five to eight to ten percent per month. Because so many you know, miles. Because there's so many miles. You know, the average miles on a resale Lamborghini with two years of age is two thousand five hundred per year. So when I'm putting on two thousand five hundred per month, <laughs> that's changing the game. You know, I mean that's like I'm I'm going from two fifty to one twenty five in a year. Yeah. Right. But I think the thing that's helped you is the luxury car market being on fire the last couple of years too, right? Well, it's helped me in the past two years be able to take some of my old fleet, repurpose it. But you know, just like if I owned a home, uh, to compare it, let's say I had a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house that I bought in two thousand seventeen and it was worth five hundred thousand. I then had to buy a $500,000 home to replace that 250. Right, right. So the same thing happened here. I was getting a car for 250, it was worth 350. I sold it. I just paid 300 for a new one, you know, because the market just kept going up and up right, and up. Right. And inflation didn't help my rental rates. Right? Really? People it, weren't paying that much more. I've actually decreased my prices over the past two years because we're in a, in a weird spot in Las Vegas where it's not like this is a necessity, right? Like food, if someone wants to buy a chicken sandwich, they like that chicken sandwich, it's $10 and I'm raised to 11, I'm still gonna sell the chicken sandwich. Right. But this is not a necessity. This is not something someone needs. This is a luxury activity that you can compare with a helicopter tour, you know, a limo ride or a show on Las Vegas Boulevard, something along those lines, a nicer hotel room, maybe more alcohol, right? There's a lot of things that you can compare this expense to. So when you're talking about $1,800 to $2,300 a day for a Lamborghini, you could easily be like, no, I don't want to use that right there. I want to use it somewhere else. Right. So I've started to drop my prices because the volume has slowed. When there's 4 million people in a month coming to Vegas, it's easy to find 25 people a day that want to rent a car. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is too, you've diversified a little bit. Obviously you got Houston's Hot Chicken, which is going great. Yeah. But I noticed in the back, you got an auto spa. Correct. You call yeah. it a spa. I've never seen that. Um, it's because my basic car wash, I mean, we do like these flat rate $100 details. That's like the lowest level. Yeah. Um, I had to build a half a million dollar car wash for this business. Yeah, let's go see the car yeah. wash. I wanna see what you got going on there. All right, dude, the auto spa is crazy. So I had to build this to physically rent my cars. Now, consider the volume that I just told you of what we do. Let's call it 1,500 car rentals per month, right? We're washing at least 1,500 cars per month, right? And so when you think about that, we had to figure out how to make our own water, our own soaps, our own everything. And so as I first started this business and my volume started to increase, I had to figure out how to wash a car two to three times a day, right? And then when you wash a car with paint and, and chemicals and everything, you're gonna damage it, right? Most people wash their car once every 10, 12 days, not three times a day, right? right. So what we decided to do is we decided to alkalinize our water and 
what that does is it kind of extracts the dirt off the car without using soap. So we use soap, you know, once, maybe once or twice a month versus every single car wash. And that water statically pulls that dirt off the car, mm. right? So we're ceramic coating and we're protecting the cars with uh, paint protection films and, and all those things to protect the integrity of the paint in the beginning. But it cost a lot of money and it cost a lot of energy to, to design this system to where these cars did not look bad after six to seven months. So during the pandemic, I said, you know, I've got to like, diversify a little bit. I want to get some local business. So I opened this place up to the public. Mm. Right? And so, so it was only for you in the beginning. Yeah, I had already built it. I mean, I had to build this, right? That's why we kind of half use it as like a tire area and a you know storage area. That's why it doesn't look so pretty back here because it was never designed to be in the public. But as you can see, I mean, over here we have um, one of our uh, local attorneys, um, Steve Demopoulos. He, uh, who would, I would have never thought with the license plate, yeah. but you know. He's entrusting us with his uh, $5 million Bugatti here. This is uh, this was actually previously Post Malone's Bugatti. I don't know if you yeah. follow that story, but. Uh, no, I didn't follow the story, what happened? Oh, well just Post Malone sold his car and Steve bought it and there was some uh, contention involved and there was a lawsuit in place and it's a, it's a cool TMZ article if you guys want to pull it up. But uh, this car here is getting a uh, $5,000 ceramic coating, polish, and Wow. Detail. So it helps us bring in that revenue. You know, this is a beautiful white on white Dude, car. Dude, this is sick. This I mean, white on white looks so good. It's, consider how hard it is to keep this thing clean, right? I mean, yeah. like with women in makeup or, you know, guys with blue jeans, I, this is a, one of the hardest interiors to keep clean. You almost need to drive it with a plastic bag on the car, but jobs like this, we're super prepared for, and we're able to, to help customers that have cars along the lines to get their full potential out of what the beauty in the car was designed for. This, I think this is the coolest car that I've seen. Like, this is just sick. Yeah. I've, I've been toying with the idea of maybe trading a couple of my cars to get this in addition. And uh, I have a Bugatti Veyron that uh, is actually the same color as your hair. Uh, nice. It's purple, which is uh, my favorite car color. Yeah. But uh, it's not a Chiron. This is the newest car from Bugatti. This is a 2000, and, uh, this one's actually, I think is a 19, but uh, 2019, 20, and 21, they've made this model car. And this currently has, I think the world record of the fastest car of 316 miles an hour which is pretty epic. I mean, this so car can go 316. This particular one can't. This one can go like 275, but they made a, a, a version that can go 316. It looks exactly the same. It just has just a just, car. That's crazy that a car on the road could go 275 miles an hour. Yeah, I've, I've actually been 243 miles an hour in my purple one. Um, it doesn't feel as safe to go that fast. <laughs> I could only imagine what 316 would feel like. like you, you kind of think that maybe if yeah, there's that's some crazy. vibration, you're gonna uh, fall off the earth almost, you know? Dude, my man here is like so gentle and careful. Yeah, yeah. There, there's so much to a car wash that costs, you know, I, I use the word car wash so lightly, but you know, when you're doing a detail of this caliber, like uh, the, the materials that go on a car of this price point are completely different than going on a car of, of like that Acura NSX over there. Yeah. Right? You know, um, there's a Ferrari F40 back there. That's a really cool car. Like the um, Lambo. The one with the hood open. Oh, you got an old school Ferrari over here. Yeah, this is a, that's a $3 million 1991 Ferrari F40. This is $3 million. Yes. This is a, one of those cars that define heritage that I was telling you about. Wow. This is the first car to ever hit 200 miles an hour in history. So 1991 Ferrari F40. Um, this car here is absolutely mental. It was twin turbo with like 500 something horsepower in the 90s. So is this somebody's car you're washing? This actually used to be my car. Um, I recently sold this car uh, about two months ago and uh, the new owner likes to store it here. So the current owner just took the car to the track and uh, as you can see, the tires are, are a little uh, uh, used. Yep. Um, these were the wheels that I had on the car here. Uh, I did a little bit more modern approach. Uh, so when I sold them the car, I had these wheels on it. He went and put these wheels. These are actually eighteen thousand dollars. What? Used. Like these are like these are tire wheels that are like thirty years old. So eighteen thousand dollars still. Right. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm actually. It's funny. I have the world's only subwoofer and sound system in a Ferrari F40. So when these cars came from the factory, they had no speakers, nothing, and I installed a sound system in this car prior to me selling it. So that's funny. Pretty epic. 
Uh, I kind of, I, I like this car, but like this car doesn't really work in Vegas, right? Yeah. It's, there's really no air conditioning. There's, it's very difficult to drive. Like it's one of the most uncomfortable small cars you'll ever get into. It's just, if you're a Ferrari fan. It's iconic. It's iconic. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. And then you have a couple more rentals, like the Lamborghini Urus here is a rental. That Aventador is a rental. Yeah. Um, the other Ferrari over there is a rental. Yeah. And then I've got a sea of auto cycles over there in the storage, because obviously at 114 degrees, I don't know if it's smart to drive an auto cycle. You know, that could be actually detrimental to your health. Yeah. So tell me about the margins on the car wash side. How does that do as a business? Well, any service-based business, as you know, has excessively high margins, right? Yep. So when we're washing a car and we're doing something along those lines, you know, that's a $5,000 uh, service. And the margin on that is probably, let's say the cost is essentially three fifty to $600. Wow. Right? Because there's five days of painstaking like they're using a brush that's like this big yeah. to scrub every inch of the car. So, you know, you're paying for the labor, right? Yeah. I mean, that's 50 hours essentially in labor to just do that service, right? Right. So like a mechanic um, doing an engine job for, let's say mechanics cost between 200 and 250 an hour for these types of cars, right? Think of what 10, 12, 15 hours a day would be. Mm -hmm. you know, you're spending thousands of dollars a day to have them work on your car. There's no difference with a, with a car wash like this. So the margins are service, you know, they could be upwards of 60 to 70%. So do you make more money in the car wash business than the rental business? As far as margin goes, absolutely. I mean, you make probably five to six times more money, right? Yeah. Because like when you're selling man hours, it's pretty straightforward, right? Right. When, when we're doing these rentals behind us, so we talk about margin and you, and you want to get the best margin out of a rental car company. It's in these auto cycles. Mm. These auto cycles back here, I mean, I have, uh, I had actually upwards of almost 50 of them at one point um, when the, the height of the popularity was going. Now I've got close to like 15. And I think that um, that number might be shrinking because the, the popularity of auto cycles is obviously coming down. When you can go and you can purchase these now for I think about $25,000. Okay. When they first came out, they were a lot more than that and they were very hard to get, right? Mm. Polaris wasn't manufacturing them. This other one over here called a Vanderhall, this is about $45,000. It has a heater, it has doors, it has a roof. It's a little bit more, I would say, livable, right? But when you're renting something like this, there's really no marketplace. There's no comparable, right? It's still an experience. And I was renting these between 350 and 550 a day, depending on the options and the prices. Right. And when they cost about $30,000, that's really good margin. Yeah. These have Chevy engines inside of them. So they're basically free to maintain and they don't really depreciate. Motorcycles and auto cycles, miles don't typically matter like it does on a Ferrari or Lamborghini, right? Right. So these have been my best uh, breadwinners from the company's history. But as uh, the last about 12 months, we've just seen declining revenues in, in this product because like, I pretty much think that the fad is over. Got right? it. At the height of its popularity, they were in every hip hop video. They were all over the internet. I mean, they were just being modified and, and you know, what comes up must go down. So I think they're on their way down. And you know, right now um, what's really in is luxury SUVs. Mm. So those have the highest margins. My current rental fleet, where the Lamborghini SUV or the Rolls Royce SUV, you know, the Bentley SUV, those ones there have the highest margins because again, miles don't matter as much. Yeah. So when you're reselling that car, if it depreciates 10% on new versus 50% on new, it's yeah. a big difference, yeah. right? All right, dude, so we've gone through the business, crazy what you've done. My big question is, obviously when you started in 2015, Turo and stuff like that wasn't around. Now everybody wants to throw their cars. Like, how has that changed things for you? So the big cars, the really expensive ones, it doesn't affect me because they're not on Turo. You know, like occasionally you'll find an old Lamborghini on Turo for like 700 bucks, but it's not the same, it's not the same thing. Um, I've seen a big uh, drop off in price point for player slingshots because people on Turo are renting those for like 60 to $70 a day. Wow. Um, everybody and their mom can go and finance a slingshot for 100 and, Power sports equipment is usually unique. No one really understands this, but when you finance like an RV or some recreational vehicle, they do 12 year financing, mm. 10 years, 12 year financing. So you can get a 144 month loan on a slingshot and have a 150 to $200 car payment or like power sports payment. And then when people are putting those on Turo, they're like, oh, I only need to make, rent this twice to make my payment for a hundred bucks and they're just gonna let it go as much as they can. And maybe they think that they're gonna get five to $800 a month in extra revenue, right? right? Um, 
Well, that doesn't always end up being the best because obviously if you're doing a 12 year loan, you never pay your principal down and you're basically just paying interest only, right? right? And those things are depreciating, you know, just as much as, as they are if you have a five year loan. Um, that's affected us quite a bit, I think, as far as the price points. You know, the volume of slingshots, I think are dramatically down across the board because you can tell when someone rented one on Turo, right? Because it doesn't have the same, like, the guys around town, they put stickers on them, what company logos are right. So when you see one without all that stuff, you know it came from Turo. And uh, you can kind of tell the people, you know, you can tell that they're driving it a little bit more aggressive. They're, yeah, yeah. they're being, they, they feel like it's not, they, they're not gonna get in trouble, yeah. right? Turo has a real big problem with peer to peer, just like Airbnb does yep. with like the party houses. Like imagine what you're doing when you're renting a car from another person, right? They don't see that person as a threat for lawsuits or company charges or all of the things that a big company could do to you if you ruin their car, yeah. right? If you damage it or along those lines. So, you know, I think that uh, Turo is helping and hurting the industry at the same time, but we'll see, time will tell. You know, I don't think the, the Turo business will last very long because eventually, you know, when the car market starts to decline, people are gonna try to sell those cars and flip out of them and they're gonna be too worn down, they're gonna have too many miles on them and they're gonna owe too much money to get out of them. My, my impression is I think Turo is kinda great if you have your own car and you wanna make some side income. Like Absolutely, one, car, one or two cars, no problem. But like to run a big operation like this, it's not gonna work on Turo. There's quite a bit of people on Turo that have 10 to 20 to 30, even 50 cars. Right. right, people are making businesses on Turo, which I kind of find is a little bit unfair. They don't typically have the same cost that we do, right? Their taxes are different, their operation is different, their building is different, their employees are different, they're not paying payroll tax. You know, like all the things that go involved in actually renting and operating a real business doesn't exist if you're putting 30 cars on Turo, right? So that is unfair, but like you said, I mean, if you have a sidecar and you're, you're doing, um, you know, putting your, your spare car on Turo for the weekends and making some income in it, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's actually good. Yeah. So tell me about just the accident side of things. Like, that's what your YouTube channel is based on. Yeah. That's actually why my YouTube channel doesn't grow very much because I don't have consistent accidents. Although I would love to uh, see that content growing and growing and growing and being very consistent, I also don't want anybody to get hurt. So um, I don't have any injury accidents, which is really good. Never had an injury, no one ended up going to the hospital, nothing along those lines, no real insane, unsafe stuff. But what I do have is a lot of people always lying to me, right? <laughs> like this one lady was driving on the wrong side of the road, could have been detrimental, uh, going uh, plus the speed limit. And uh, she saw an oncoming car and, and she drove over the median, right? Which had rocks and trees and everything. And basically just took the whole front of the car off, right? Underneath the car was totaled. And she called us and she said that she crashed the car because the antifreeze had blew up. That was her excuse. The antifreeze had blown up. And I thought that that was so funny that um, that was what she tried to tell us happened and the reason why that accident happened. Not that she was on the wrong side of the road, not that she was driving 100 miles an hour in a 35, not that it was three in yeah. the morning and she was probably intoxicated. Right. The antifreeze had blown up. Yeah. <laughs> so. You, I, I've watched your channel, man. There's some crazy stories. But um, guys, if you wanna see those stories and just like what it's like running this on a day-to-day -day basis, definitely subscribe to Houston's channel. And uh, bro, I appreciate you showing me around, man. It's been awesome. Do you want to make it on uh, my channel? Yeah. I'll give you a Lambo right now. Make some content. We'll make it, dude. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right, bro. So guys, if you like this kind of video, make sure you subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.